Welcome to the prayer channel. Oh Lord, how we desire to be wise in your eyes. Lord, how we desire to have your knowledge, Lord, and to use the knowledge that you've given us, Lord, so that we can be salt and light in the earth. Lord, we desire you to help us today as we read through Proverbs 26, which is entitled, Honour is not fitting for a fool. It reads, As snow in summer and rain in harvest, so honour is not fitting for a fool. Like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without a cause shall not alight. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the fool's back. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. He who sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts his own feet and drinks violence. Like the legs of the lame that hang limp is a proverb in the mouth of fools. Like the one who binds a stone in a sling is he who gives honour to a fool. Like a thorn that goes into the hand of a drunkard is a proverb in the mouth of fools. The great God who formed everything gives the fool his hire and the transgressor his wages. As a dog returns to his own vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than him. The lazy man says, there's a lion in the road, a fierce lion is in the streets. As a door turns on its hinges, so does the lazy man on his bed. The lazy man buries his hand in the bowl. It wearies him to bring it back to his mouth. The lazy man is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. He who passes by and meddles in a quarrel not his own is like one who takes a dog by the ears. Like a madman who throws firebrands, arrows and death is the man who deceives his neighbour and says, I was only joking. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out, and where there is no tail bearer, strife ceases. As charcoal is to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The words of a tail bearer are like tasty trifles, and they go down into the innermost body. Fervent lips with a wicked heart are like earthenware covered with silver dross. He who hates disguises it with his lips and lays up deceit within himself. When he speaks kindly, do not believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Though his hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and he who rolls a stone will have it roll back on him. A lying tongue hates those who are crushed by it, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Lord, help us not to be like the deceitful man, Lord, like the foolish man, or like the lazy man, Lord, that you outline here. Lord, would we not be found like any of these described here, but instead, would we exercise the wisdom that we learn here to ensure that we do not repeat these mistakes. Lord, you said that a fool, Lord, is wise in his own eyes. Lord, would we not be wise in our own eyes? Would we be looking for the wisdom that you have, Lord, and attempting to be wise in your eyes, Lord? Lord, it's easy for us to desire to take shortcuts, but as we learn here, Lord, these shortcuts don't work. It doesn't work for the foolish man or for the lazy man, Lord God. Lord, help us, Lord, to be those who are diligent in our efforts and our endeavours, Lord. Would we work hard? Would you bless the work of our hands as we work hard, Lord? Would we be those who are open to hearing and open to correction, Lord? So, Lord, that we're not seeking wisdom from the world, but instead from you. Lord, the danger of thinking that we know it all means that we are open to error. We're open to going the wrong way for a long period of time without realising that we have gone astray. Lord, would we seek wisdom on a minute by minute and an hourly basis, Lord? Would we understand that at any point, Lord, we could get it wrong? At any point we could turn the wrong way, we could make a mistake that could cost us our lives. Lord, you said that we should help our brother come out of sin in Galatians 6, but Lord, you also said that we should be careful lest we also be tempted. And it's the same with this scripture here, Lord. Help us to be those who try our best, Lord, to not be like any of these described here. 
But in doing so, Lord, as we help others out, Lord, would we not be found being dragged into things that we shouldn't be by accident, Lord, not even with intent. But the way darkness seems to work is that it invites us in, disguises itself, speaks kindly, and then covers us. So Lord, would we never fall into the traps set by those who are deceitful around us or set by the enemy who is deceitful in his very nature? Lord, would we not fall into a pit? Lord, would we not have a stone roll back over us, Lord? Lord, would we not have a flattering mouth, Lord, that would lead to ruin? These warnings are stark, they're strong, they're concerning because it seems that any of us at any time, Lord, could fall into this. So help us to seek you, seek you, hear from you, look for you in everything and everywhere. Lord, would we not be foolish? And Lord, where we have been foolish in the past, Lord, it says, Lord, help us not to repeat our folly. Help us not to repeat the folly that we've already engaged in. Lord, you said if we're overcome by foolishness, there is very little hope for us. So Lord, wash us, cleanse us from all deceit, all folly, all laziness, all foolishness, all wastage. Keep us on your straight and narrow path, Lord. We actually choose today, Lord, to give you every single one of our pathways, everything that we're planning, every thought that we're making, Lord, we give it to you today and we just decree and declare, Lord, that we from now will be trying to follow you, follow your wisdom and shun the wisdom of man. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.